So let's go back to basics and talk about like really what is grassroots organizing? Uh, what does that mean? Um, for, for you might know a variety of different types of grassroots groups. We might think of a grassroots organizer as, as someone who's working for equality issues in their community um, with you know, signs and things like that, or talking to legislative, uh, great organizations about vote around voter rights and protections um, and that kind of thing. Or just, I've seen some great groups where it's just about communication, like Braver Angels, where they're, they're working on getting people to talk across the divide. Um, you know, Pete for America, tons of grassroots organizing there. Uh, you can really tell when uh, a candidate is a strong, strong candidate, when you can see these organic kind of these grassroots organizations kind of organically sprout forward. Like, you know, for, for Obama, there were so many people that were volunteering and organizing for him that just had such a passion for that campaign. But here's some examples of some of the, some grassroots organizations. Um, as you can see down there, Stacy's wonderful Fair, Fair Fight, uh, great organization. And then within even Indiana itself, we have some that have sprung up since the 2016 election. Um, and of course, you know, building bridges there. Swing Left is a great resource. If you're building a grassroots organization, uh, you decide to go forward, join Swing Left. They have awesome leadership tools. Um, they have a great community of leaders. They do some amazing work, all their different grassroots organization. So um, that's a great group to join. So, you know, that's grassroots organizing for you. There are people that are working in different areas, specific areas, uh, and they're very focused kind of thing. Um, one of the biggest things I think a lot of hurdles we have when people want to start an organization is they feel like it's they how dare I how do how do I have this audacity to think that that I should um, start this and and for me in 2016 there was no doubt something had to be done that was the that was the um, the rock bottom for me of like. I need to take action because things are, are just too out of hand. And I think it's always important to remember, um, and this is a big part of building bridges, we believe everyone contributes value no matter what they do, what level of participation that they have. Maybe you don't start a grassroots organization, but maybe you host a few phone banks or do a couple events for a candidate or, or even just make some calls on your own independently. You really have to give yourself the authority to solve the problem to feel empowered um, to solve it. One of Pete's rules of the road, those 10 tenets of kind of Pete's value focus campaign was, was boldness. And when I might feel like somebody wasn't receptive to what I was doing, or maybe another organization was just kind of discounted the work that I was doing, I always fall, fell, fell, fell back on that boldness, stop, regroup and go forward always understanding that you have that power to solve that problem, that you're contributing in that, that wave, that democratic wave that we were always talking about in 2020, uh, you were a droplet or two, and we needed a lot of that happening. So we're all moving forward together. And what's so fantastic about grassroots organizing, what you're bringing to the table is that you are not within a formal structure. You're not a, a, a democratic club. You're not a, a state party. You're not you know, having to adhere basically to a lot of rules. You're not a business. You're a, vol you're a, a very dynamic, uh, able, agile organization. You're a bunch of volunteers. You can move quickly. I always like to bring the example of, you know, we might have a call on Tuesday and somebody might bring a great idea to the table in a steering committee meeting. And then by Thursday, Friday, we have some, we have action taken on that, whether it's postings or events are listed or that kind of thing. It's amazing what you can do as grassroots organizers. You can just turn around on a dime. Um, and that is a great service that you can offer to formal campaigns uh, because they may not have the resources to show up at a place or have the number of people needed to go to a to someone's office and really make uh, that that change. A uh, big thing that's happening now is ballot collection uh, signatures for getting on the ballots. And we were just having a conversation before this about people missing those deadlines. A grassroots group would be is the great solution to that because campaigns need to they don't have that manpower, but we do. So the power of that grassroots organization 
organizing is that ability to move quickly and you're working in the local community you know your people because you are the people in that community you know when events are when there's farmers markets what corner gets the most traffic you know so much that a, a candidate on many different levels whether it's a, even a local candidate all the way up to a national level isn't going to know right um, and you have that power to recruit volunteers, to get a feel for who wants to support that candidate in the community and make you know, lists of names that that campaign can rely on. And that relational aspect, the fact that you know your community, you're taking out your garbage can and talking to your neighbor, you're walking your dog, you're talking to your neighbor, you're teaching other people in your community to reach out to their community members. So that's, there's a lot that grassroots organizations really bring to the table. Oops, go back there. And, you know, when we talk relational organizing, it's a term that people are still, it's still new, even though it's been a few years, but really what it is, is you're counting on your people to build on existing relationships, whether it's a coworker, a family member, a neighbor, a babysitter, a dog sitter, anything like that, you have these relationships. Some of them are more formalized, you know, like your coworkers at work, you're gonna see them every day, um, or business uh, relationships or, or clubs that you're part of or things like that. Um, but then there's the informal, like just, just chatting and talking with people or wearing a button, uh, you know, people, building community. I mean, when I would wear my button for Pete, people would see it and be like, oh, there's fellow supporters around or, oh my God, I didn't know there were Democrats in Carmel, Indiana, that kind of thing. Uh, and those informal relationships. So you're really representing um, the organization and really making those connections in that community that organizations don't have the resources for. Um, like I mentioned, you know, campaigns have to work top down. They have a structure. They have people they report to. They 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 have to ask permission for a lot of things, right? They have to go through, you know, a structure. Whereas it's grassroots. We're more like show up at that school board meeting. Let's get five or ten people or fifty people to show up. The you know Thursday night. Um, to the board meeting at a last minute's notice or things like that. So we're working together, parallel together, but kind of coming from, from different ways uh, and meeting in the middle. There's a lot of, uh, you'll hear about time, talent, and treasure. And that really is uh, something campaigns lack very, very much, right? Uh, so they need people, they need the, the boots on the ground, as we call it, uh, which community grassroots organizing can do. You know, we can increase that visibility and that connection to the community. So we're kind of all those puzzle pieces that we put together, right? The campaign and the grassroots, we complement each other and that's our goal. Um, and where we fit in and with campaigns, it can be difficult for campaigns to understand and say, oh, you can, you're capable of doing these things. And that's one of the things forming a grassroots organization. You want to formalize yourself. You want to show that you have organization and structure and things like that. And we'll be talking about using tools to kind of lend that to your organization. Campaigns need to know what to do with you. And we need to build trust and, and, and that they feel like we're going to represent the campaign in a very positive light. So if you get a little pushback where people, you know, the, the state party doesn't quite know what to do with you or your local, you know, uh, candidates don't know what to do with you, you have to earn and build those relationships with people over time and show them that, you know, you can follow through and that you're an, an asset to their campaign. And, you know, this is where, you know, we can help grassroots organizing is that organization building, which is always ongoing through a campaign, whether it's building out, like I said, those contacts, the community, potential donors, uh, you know, visibility events to kind of get the word out, uh, basic housekeeping things that need to be done that they don't have the money to hire people to be doing, right? And then eventually kind of rolling into voter contact. And I can't stress enough as a grassroots organization, especially in a year of 2022, everything should be focused around voter contact, not just creating an organization just to be an organization, you know, by name, we really need to be speaking directly to those voters. So I can't stress enough that your actions should always result in some kind of voter contact, whether you're recruiting volunteers that are going to call five or six uh, uh, family members uh, 
to, to, you know, and have that voter conversation with them, or you have volunteers tabling at events and they're actually talking to volunteers or calling people, uh, you know, manning phone banks for our candidates and things like that. It all really comes down to voter contact. And we need to always keep that in our perspective versus kind of like, let's just build a great grassroots organization. You have to get out into the streets we're fortunate enough that, you know, by summer, by spring, things are going to be lifted. We're going to be able to have that contact. We're going to be out knocking on doors. Uh, and that's a very exciting uh, thing uh, to do. And I think, you know, we can all feed off of that really great energy. And of course, as we built our foundation, we've built that voter contact, we've helped support our candidate throughout the election cycle, there is that GOTV. And we need an army of people to be doing those things. So um, that's how, you know, we formed our grassroots organization is really making sure that we're, we're doing those events and that voter contact to get that, those votes out. So say you want to start an organization, you're starting from scratch, you're like, oh, I got some ideas, I got someone I want to uh, support, I've got some issues that are really important, how do we really start, right? Looking at yourself, you might say, well, you know, we know what grassroots organizations kind of look like, who is a grassroots organizer? Well, in my opinion, everyone is. If you have that passion, you, you, have, that, you have the qualifications uh, to be a grassroots organizer. You know, and like I said, there's that word passion, right? And then the curiosity, if you're willing to look at things more like, well, how can I solve this problem? Uh, and just keep an open mind to ideas that people have uh, for events or, or things like that in the organization, to, to curiosity to understanding the people around you and meeting the people, um, that's gonna help you go a long way. And that desire to help others to share their skills. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, you might aggregate like opportunities for things. What you're really doing is you're as a as a kind of leading a grassroots organization. Um, is you're helping people explore what they want to bring to the table. Uh, a lot of times when it comes to progressive, you know, organizing and that kind of thing, people want to use skills that they don't use all the time that they've have an interest in utilizing, uh, whether it's, you know, helping people write op-eds, but then they might be an engineer in their professional career. So it's a great opportunity for you to help people explore different parts and talents that they have and put them to work. That's been very rewarding for me. I've had a lot of people kind of come out with doing things they never thought that they would do before, uh, trainings or talking or public speaking or making phone calls or showing up at events and standing at, on street corners with signs, uh, helping people and giving people the opportunity to really express themselves and, and try something new. So it's a desire to kind of help people share their skills and, uh, and really uh, develop and, and explore. And then it does help to be organized, um, you know, keeping track of names, having some kind of system, calendar, that kind of thing. Uh, and then, like I said, support, not working alone. I worked alone for a very, very long time, but I had a wonderful opportunity to build a team several months in when I, after I started organizing. Um, and that is when the magic really, really happens because you're really collaborating and becoming a full board kind of organization, not just an organizer anymore. And if you have, you know, that understanding that it's important to kind of connect people and resources, that's what you're doing, right? That aggregation of like, um, whether it's taking information from a national campaign and, uh, you know, finding a way of getting that information down to your community level, to your people that are your supporters that are in that organization. Uh, that is a huge tool that you can offer uh, as an organizer uh, for people. It's really sh information sharing and connecting people um, to, you know, hey, you want to write postcards? This is the organization to go to. You want to write letters? Here's a great website with templates. Uh, you know, you want to, uh, you know, show up at events or learn more about, uh, you know, civics or something like that. Take the Building Bridges session on uh, civics for change kind of thing. So let's talk about, you know, you are, you've decided to organize, but you need to define like who you are. What is that organization going to do? What's their focus and reach? What do you, what's the work that you want to do? Um, in Building Bridges, we we focus on grassroots organizing, right? The more specific you can be your focus, the more unique you will be, right? You're going to find kind of your niche. Um, and for us, it was grassroots organizing. We had, we had that unique experience of all coming together to learn to organize 
as we were organizing for the campaign. Um, some of us were brand new to it. Some people had done it before. And that was really where we wanted to focus our energies was that, gr that grassroots organizer building up uh, the skill set for people like that and giving them the opportunity to kind of you know, organize like they did before for other people and things like that. So that was where we found it, right? What did we want to accomplish as Building Bridges? Being prepared for the next important elections that were coming along, keeping people together and connected, educated, building skills, because we knew we were all going to mobilize. We're, we're, our army is going to need to mobilize again uh, for very important elections. And then also, like I said, what makes you unique? What makes you different? And ours was that grassroots organizing aspect. There's a lot of organizations out there that are educating and training on campaigns, but they tend to focus more on staff, right? Or, or want to be a staffer kind of level skills. And we knew that that's what made us unique. And we always remember to go back to that, uh, to keep it simple, that that's where our focus really is. And I, and I love to see like a combination like a using intersectionality whether it's women that are for uh you know voting rights very specific intersectionality or uh, students that are really involved in environmental rights for their campus um kind of combining things and in, in it, the more you compare it down the more unique you are you can be very specific kind of what your goals are um, for me, you know, the geographic was easy because nobody was organizing uh, statewide for Pete for America. You know, Pete's home base was here, but they were working out nationally. So I just picked the state. Um, in some areas, you know, people pick a region, a county, a town, uh, that, or they can pick a coalition, you know, environmental rights or reproductive rights or, uh, you know, uh, stop sign advocacy or things like that. Uh, so you figure out what you are and it, it can be based on geography, a coalition, uh, you know, know what your why is. Why are, is everyone that's, that, that wants to form this group? What's your passion behind it? Kaz does a great session called Unlock Your Political Power. And it's really knowing what your story is of what brought you to it. Like I told you the story of 2016. Um, I might tell people more detail about waking up that night in the morning on 2016, going to bed thinking everything was going to be okay and how I woke up and how I felt, right? So what was that why? Why, why are you here organizing? Um, because that story is going to connect you to everyone. It's going to be the, the foundation of your communication with people when you're talking about it. Um, I love to look at it. What do you want to fix? Whether it's you need you need to get someone, people, people to stop speeding in front of your house, that's the problem you want to fix, right? Um, getting Trump out of office, that was the problem I wanted to fix. Um, you know, what is that problem that your group wants to fix? Um, and what does your group have to offer that is different? For us, it was, we had a lot of a strong grassroots organizing background. So what is it that you offer uh, that's different? And once again, that intersectionality can really make you a niche grassroots organization. So you need to build your team. That support is so vital. So um, you might start out with a, a group of two or three people, one or two people, yourself, uh, but then starting to build that group out. You need to do kind of active recruitment. Um, so what I like to do, what I did for Pete was I set up a weekly event and then I was able to get phone lists from the campaign of people that said they wanted to volunteer, but they could, the campaign had no capacity to follow up with these people, but they had expressed an interest in volunteering. And I personally sat there and called hours every day and talk to people and made some of the best friends. And that is where, believe it or not, those calls to those people, all my steering committee people kind of came out of that. It was a magic that happened, right? I set up an event. I said, hey, it's Jenny from Pete from America. I'm a volunteer. I'm organizing for Pete. We have an event every Monday night. Um, there's a call. Uh, you know, here's the information for it. Um, and, you know, we could set up an event to register like you did for this, or I could just, you know, give them my phone number, they could call me back. And I still remember those first conversations with people uh, that uh, when they called me back, and they're like, I was waiting for someone to call me, I'm so excited about this candidate, we need to do something to get him into office, right? There is a groundswell. There are people out there that want to join you on this, on this kind of forming an organization kind of thing. So set up an event, a tangible, 
travel. It could be an in-person, we're gonna meet Saturday at this park at this time kind of thing. Um, and what you can do at this event is say, we're gonna provide updates from the campaign. We're gonna talk about news. We're gonna talk about you know what we can do going forward, right? So, I, and I had this weekly going on and then it rolled over to Joe too. So for two years, every Monday at seven o'clock, that's where you were gonna find Jenny was she was gonna be on a Zoom call or a phone call, uh, you know, that's where you could send your friends to who were interested, they knew where to go, right, had that place to send them. And then using that phone bank to recruit, getting those lists. Um, or if you don't, looking through Facebook, looking through your Twitter feed, who are you having conversations with, who's posting, who's like you, who's got the same kind of like thoughts about things, or has a great way of engaging with people that you're kind of tripping over a lot, you wanna start reaching out to those people. Um, and then, you know, have them develop and, and start to recruit people into the organization. Having, you know, house parties where we were doing them virtually, where Jenny could invite 10 people to show up for a Zoom call because we would give them a special update for the campaign um, if you need to do those. And then setting the goals saying, okay, each person here, um, you know, if we had each person in this call bring to uh, a person to next week's meeting, um, we would have double the people show up, right? It's very simple math. Um, and, you know, we're going to use these for voter requests, getting people to vote for our candidates. We can use them for building our organization too. So set some goals for each person. Um, and then setting up the group, the steering committee. Uh, that's what we called it. I had one for Indiana for Joe. Um, and then we have one for building bridges that we were, we meet every week and we talk and we decide together and we collaborate and we get lots of great ideas out of. And so this was my steering committee uh, format for Indiana for Joe. Uh, and so we broke it out to communications and membership. And some of these areas, I like to say, were stronger than others. Uh, you know, maybe we didn't have a ton of special events, but our training really took off because it's who comes to it, who brings what skills to the table. Uh, it organically will happen with your organization and you're gonna be stronger in some areas than others. We, Terry and I just, and, and Mary, we just worked really well with building up the training and the speakers programs and that kind of thing. And that became our strength, right? Um, and, and that kind of thing. Um, so that's how we broke it out. We kind of had this steering committee with these different um, groups. And so it's more of like a division of labor, like a company, right? Um, so like I said, having a structure to it, that breaking out the division of, of uh, decisions and how decisions are made, um, and breaking out, you know, a division of labor is so important. Uh, we had team leads for each thing. So if it's a phone banking team lead, uh, a uh, events team lead, people taking different responsibility for things. And people will come in and say, hey, I really had this great idea for something, having them take ownership for it and leading it, right? Not adding it to the work that you're doing, right? Uh, it's very helpful. Having somebody that's, you know, managing social media if you have one person doing one account, it's going to be a lot easier than uh, the you as a single person trying to do everything, right? And then, of course, having a touch base, you know, you're having your weekly meetings, but set up a time every six months where you're having a broader base kind of planning meeting, where it's not about the day-to-day -day operations, but it's more like where you see yourself in the next six months, what are we going to focus on, uh, things like that. And then revisiting this whole idea of kind of having values, you know, like you'll see a lot of corporations now, they'll be like, we believe in diversity and inclusion, and they're very upfront, right, about these things. Well, it's important that people do that because then people know where their standing is. Like, uh, uh, it was a great tool on the campaign, Pete's Rules of the Road, they're over here on the left. Um, we were, were shocked when we would tell voters, like, Pete has rules that we have to follow. We can't just kind of go out there and, and be negative and, and speak badly of other candidates or speak or treat other organizers uh, on competitive campaigns that way. Pete held us to a very high level of responsibility, right? And then when Joe took over, he even had Joe's rules. He kind of adopted his own. And this helps in so many regards because 
um, when you're organizing, you might have some people that get off track or different people come in with different opinions about things. And always having kind of this touchstone of these are our values, right? We're always going to be respectful and belonging is important and being truthful and, and having substance to the work. These are touchstones that kind of help keep things on the right track, kind of bringing back any kind of like disagreements and arguments or, or kind of thing. We at the beginning of every session, like every um, uh, Zoom meeting that I would have, I would say these are our rules of the road for Pete for America. Pete has this expectation that we're going to, uh, you know, represent the organization this way, and it was a it was a great tool. Also, what it is is if you go to a campaign and you say this is our organization and these are our values. It's, they're going to feel safer with you because an organization is looking at you like, are you a liability to us? Um, because they, they're not used to working in, with grassroots organizations. They have to build a relationship of trust. And this is one way that can help manifest that trust is kind of being very forward with your values, saying that we expect all of our people in our grassroots organization to adhere to these. You can create your own, have your short list. It could be two or three, or it could be 10, right? This just happened to be where we fell with these. Building Bridges appreciated this approach so much that we kind of adopted them as our rules of the road going forward, right? Um, and, and, and having that. So I do recommend having that, being very forward with that, having it on your Facebook page, having it in your meetings um, and, and that kind of thing. It's a great touchstone for your organization. And like I said, you know, forming your mission, mission, your values and your vision, uh, letting people know who you are. So people know kind of what they're getting into when they hear the name of your organization. So creating, you know, knowing who you are, knowing, having a structure to it, having a, a you know, a leadership defined, having those missions, values, and vision kind of articulated are really important. We even have lenses at Building Bridges. So we believe our programming, we want to make sure we're touching on these as we, you know, pick books or do uh, pick campaigns to support or leadership development, right? The belonging, uh, you, these are our four out of our focus for the, for, you know, that we decided about a year ago, and we'll probably revisit them annually and, and kind of change them up. So talking about activities as a, as a grassroots organization, you know, like I said, you don't have to create a bunch of activities until you've kind of built the team to do that work. You can just really build the organization and then start sharing other activities that other organizations are doing, like a building bridges, like the DNC, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, really, the mission with the activities is to kind of get people up what we call the ladder of engagement. You know, somebody who's just kind of like interested in a campaign and kind of checking it out all the way up to people that are, we call them super volunteers, like yourselves who are sitting in a, in a Zoom meeting thinking about starting a grassroots organization or running one is, you know, the goal is to get people up that ladder of engagement. So we might start people out with, hey, just share us on Facebook and Twitter, or could you, um, you know, help us collect signatures or make phone calls like we want to bring them up that ladder of engagement right as grassroots organizers uh you know this is what campaigns are doing they're trying to get you from uh you know reading about them to like contributing the maximum amount kind of thing when it, if it comes to money or becoming a super volunteer so keeping that in mind and what these activities can do you know we can have tabling you'll hear basically a tabling is tabling it's literally putting a table down with a clipboard sharing information, talking about candidates. I had one person who was collecting ballot signatures and she took a table and put it in the middle of a sidewalk, like in a park up in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I was like, she's like, yeah, I'm just in the middle of like a big park and, and she, you know, to collect signatures kind of thing. So that's literally what tabling is. It's showing up at a farmer's market, plunking down a table, you know, talking to people as they're coming by, asking something of them. Resource sharing is one of the best soft ways to approach uh, the public, I'd like to say. Um, when you're giving them information, they're more receptive than if you they think you're trying to persuade them to vote for their candidate. But if you're like, hey, did you know about this? Uh, can I give you information to help you with that? Uh, do you wanna know where your voter location is? Like a lot of times we'll do that on phone banking. We're, we're not calling on behalf of the candidate. We're calling to say, hey, did you know your, where your voter location is in the hours? 
uh, doing a lot of that and educating people on the issues that are going on around. Did you know that this is being decided by your local school board? Uh, so resource sharing, information sharing, signature collection cannot tell you. This is a very labor intensive when for Pete, we had to get over 10,000 signatures for the state. That is something the campaign couldn't invest the time or money into. A lot of campaigns hire people to actually go out and collect signatures. Uh, we collected 10,500 signatures for Pete. And that is something a grassroots organization could do. Uh, the visibility, showing up at events. Uh, you know, we went to marathons with big signs and peat heads, and we got signs out in people's yards and things like that. Um, of course, phone banking, postcarding, canvassing. When it comes to knocking on doors, you need an army of grassroots organizers to be doing that. And of course, when it comes down to the GOTV time, the time to get out the vote, the coordinated campaigns where they're going to pull all the campaigns together to work. Uh, and kind of combine their resources. We can all be a part of that. The trick is with grassroots organizing is you can be as creative as you want. You could just come up with an idea and kind of go crazy with it, right? We'll talk more about events in the session that we host called Events for Change. Uh, so join us for that one. This is an example of a very creative idea that we came up with, Signs Across America, volunteer here in Indiana. We realized we did not have enough signs out we ended up producing signs and getting 10,000 signs out statewide. Then a national organization said, I think that's a really cool idea. We're gonna do a relay of signs across America, a contact less because of COVID and it ended up at the DNC convention. And you know, this was a grassroots idea. This, no campaign was gonna spend money on this. Biden was not gonna do it, but we were able to do it, promote it and all that stuff all together. Um, I think, you know, we just had, 50, 60 volunteers working on that nationally. Uh, so just be super creative and have fun with it. Once, you know, what's really important is we want to look like a real organization, right? We want to look formalized and clean. You want to have business cards. You want to have, you know, letterhead, which people don't really use anymore. Um, so, you know, branding is really, really important. Have a consistent brand, create a logo, uh, you know, have colors that are consistent, uh, have texts that are consistent. You'll see that with our building bridges, it is, you, you know, you look at it and you're seeing kind of the same feel and the color uh, of, of, of our branding. Um, if Canva is a, canva.com is a great program. We use it for everything here at Building Bridges, um, pretty much free uh, in, until you wanna start purchasing stock images. Uh, we pay 15 bucks a month for ours and we share it. You can share it with everybody. Um, and I do recommend uh, using that. Uh, here's some of the work that we've produced for building uh, for, for Indiana for, for Biden throughout the year. As you can see, there's a consistency to the design. Um, you know, it, it really does put that polish on your organization. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Canva 2 under the tools to organize. So what's really, really cool is the tools that you can use to organize are the same tools that campaigns use, and they're free. Uh, so that is super cool, because when you go to a campaign and they're like, uh, you know, who are you, what are you doing, or, or whatever, you're having that interaction with them, and you're like, yeah, uh, we use Slack, we know how to use Mobilize, we, we know how to use Canva, we know how to use a lot of these resources, you're using the same things that they're using, so that your learning curve is, you know, great, because you could, they can rely on you to pick up a lot of responsibility, so of course, Mobilize, is the, the, the Democratic organizing website for events. Uh, you signed up for this through our, our Mobilize uh, page that we have for building bridges. Um, and you as an organization, if you just you know, follow that URL, Mobilize backslash organization backslash create, if you need the link, let us know, we'll get it to you. Um, you can create your own accounts, right? Um, and so this, you can manage all your events, you can send emails out of there, uh, you can customize messages, uh, you can do cross promotion. It's, it, and it, once again, it's giving, you're on the same platform that the candidates are on and you know how to use it and you've, you, you've pulled it together. This is our page for Building Bridges. All of our events are there. Everyone who's attended, we can access. Um, we have a list of all the events coming up. We can put our event in there with multiple dates. Um, it's wonderful. We've been really, it is such a resource for us. 
if you're when you're organizing for grassroots. Um, and then of course, Zoom, you know, uh, I plan that we will be using Zoom going forward quite a bit. We will not be stopping. We'll be doing this and in person. Um, so virtual meeting management, it's free with a time limit. There are restrictions. So you're, I think you're under 45 minutes for those. Um, you can do great breakout rooms um, and all kinds of things, even record the meetings uh, so you can post them later. And then Slack. Slack is also free. Uh, this is more like an online message board where people can post, uh, you know, in different channels uh, based on topics. Um, and they can, you can keep it internal. You need to be invited to it. Um, and certain people can have access to certain channels. Um, and that's super helpful. Uh, and it's free. And um, we use it for building bridges quite a bit. Uh, here's, I'm a member of dozens of Slack channels, uh, use them all through the Biden campaign. And, you know, there's also lots of great grassroots organizations that typically have uh, uh, their Slack channels too, but there's our Building Bridges for America Slack. And as you can see, it's kind of got these different channels. So we've, you know, here's leadership development and we have our days of action and all kinds of things. And we can just, you know, share links and information. So I, that's a great way to kind of work uh, your steering committee, you know, have a channel and you can communicate there, have a general posting for everybody in the organization. And it's very easy to add people and invite people to join. They just need to get a link and, and kind of click on it. And then also Canva, like I said, it's that's free unless you want to pay for the membership. To, membership will give you unlimited kind of clip art and things like that. We find it helpful. We all pulled our, our resources and bought one account. There's probably 10 people on there that have access to it. What's super nice is all your graphics are in one place. So you're not asking someone to email you graphics. How do I get it from A to B, right? Um, you just go, oh, it's in the folder for leadership development. Uh, oh, the new logo is in the new logo, is in the logo folder. So I really do recommend it, it keeps everything very organized uh, for you and your group. And there's a, a picture kind of, of our home page for Canva. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have our folders all set up. And we can never underestimate the value of social media. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, I'm not a super social media person, but I will do it for the organization. Uh, kind of took a break from Facebook after the election, not someone to spend a lot of time on there, but I know I have to organize there, right? So you really do need to have that social media presence. Uh, a lot of organizations are even going to ask you, what, what's your tag, you know, what is your, 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 your name on your social media? They're going to go look at those things. Um, you know, I just applied for something through the DNC and they wanted to know what my Twitter handle was, uh, that kind of thing. So we do need to have that social media presence. Um, and social media is a great way to pull people uh, that when we talked about that ladder of engagement, getting act, pe people to action, you know, we can, you know, spend a lot of time out there and share a lot of information and, and make people aware of our candidate and, and things like that and follow people. Um, and then, you know, we can get people to persuade them to eventually vote for our candidate or get them to, to uh, volunteer for our candidate or donate money for our candidate. So it's really important. Um, Information is so important because um, voter contact is a lot of countering disinformation, I find. Uh, a lot of times I'll knock on a door and they'll go, but da, but da, da, I, hear, I heard this. And you're really setting the record straight. So sadly, with social media, a lot of time and energy can be spent kind of combating uh, disinformation, especially if there's information that's not true about your candidate. Um, under, you know, come to our Facebook activist session. Uh, we can talk more about that. This just shows you kind of like how important it is to have that presence on social media. Facebook, two thirds of US adults use Facebook um, and they get their news from Facebook. So that's where they're getting their news from, right? And they're on 70% are on there daily. So there is an audience, you have to have that presence there. Uh, Twitter, the age group for that is mostly young and middle-aged users. Twitter's great for talking within silos, we call them within communities. I talk to Team Pete in Twitter, I'm not getting a ton of information outside my, my group that I'm attached to. Uh, it, so it's great for special interests or if I wanna track a particular candidate or I wanna learn about a particular event that's going on or things like that, Twitter's really great for that. But uh, it's to me, it's not super diverse. Um, 
Twitter, Facebook, you're going to have more of that opportunity to talk to more people. Instagram, you know, same, same thing. What's really nice is when you, if you have a Facebook group for your organization, uh, you can tie it into Instagram. It's all part of meta now. Uh, and so when you post on Facebook, it can post to Instagram. Uh, so that saves a little bit of time. So if I had to pick uh, two out of three, I would definitely pick Facebook and Instagram. If I had to pick one out of these, it would definitely be Facebook. Uh, but it is worth allocating um, to um, somebody on your team that's doing those, that social media. Uh, and we can cover more of that in our Facebook Activist to Changemaker to kind of help you put Facebook to work for your group. Um, and then also, believe it or not, um, I'm not sure if many of you are on it, but I am. I've been for years. Uh, Nextdoor is a great tool. Uh, I started in Indiana for Joe Biden. Uh, we have, we kind of almost top off at like 500 members. I can go in there. I can post about events. I can ask people to, uh, you know, recruit or support or, or that kind of thing or contribute. Um, I do not recommend if you're on next door, putting anything political on the general pages, either they'll pull it off or it's just going to create a whole kind of mess of negativity kind of thing. Uh, what's really nice with Nextdoor is you can create groups where people are invited to join the groups or you have to, as administrator, kind of like Facebook groups, um, approve them. So I do recommend doing it that way and, and kind of staying away from the general Nextdoor postings and making sure you're posting inside a closed group. But this is this was a great tool. I could tell people I had signs for Joe and people wanted to pick them up. And uh, it was a really great tool to use, but you have to you know curate how you use it. And some more tools to organize. Um, Google Calendar, you know, having that Google account, getting that Google Gmail account for your 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 business, uh, hosting all your Google Docs on Google is a big plus where people can add, take away, and you're all sharing those documents. Like I mentioned, next door, Miro board. So Miro.com is a, a whiteboard program that will give you a couple free white, uh, whiteboards to work with. So you can move those post-its that you can see. That's kind of where we brainstormed our steering committee and do that. And of course, Twitter, um, we are hosted through Wix. Uh, so Kaz has been able to create our gorgeous website using their templates. And then, of course, you know, Twitter and Facebook uh, utilizing uh, events and groups on Facebook. Uh, example of our website. And uh, just to let you know some more information uh, in sessions that are coming up that are really great. Real Talk, uh, Say This, Not That, really talks about messaging and, and kind of how you want to put yourself forward and present yourself. Um, and then, of course, the DNC has the Best Practices Institute. If you go to their, their homepage, go to the bottom. I think it's you'll, you'll find it easier uh, where you can actually run through their, uh, they typically have a six to eight week program where they're teaching you kind of the fundamentals of campaigns. And I found that really helpful. I've done a couple, I've done that two years in a row. Um, and then of course, we're always here for you. Reach out to us, ask questions. Uh, we wanna support you, you know, we want to help you get your grassroots organization off the ground. Thank you.